Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this somewhat chilly uh, January evening, but I am really thrilled to host our fourth uh, webinar for prospective families and applicants uh, here for the Field School. My name is Jason Hersom. I am the Director of Admission and Enrollment here at the Field School. I am really, really thankful for Aaron Bachman, Amy Chacon, and our young alumni panel who will introduce themselves in just a little while um, for taking some time this evening to give you a sense of what it's like as we wrap up a student's academic career at the field school and send them off into the world. You know, we've done webinars so far on teaching and learning. We have done one on the student experience. Uh, one is a, just a general virtual open house, but we wanted to have the opportunity to sort of show the, the, the value of the field education as it extends beyond our campus grounds. As a, before we get started, I just wanna point out a few things. One of which is that this evening, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to do a live Q&A. We're gonna cover a fair amount of material. And with that, um, we wanna make sure to have enough time for our young alums to answer some questions that we have all sort of brainstormed together and come up with to allow them to articulate their experience. That said, if you do have questions at the end of this uh, presentation, do not hesitate to reach out to either myself or Caroline Johnson, my assistant director of admission. As a reminder, January 15th, coming up this weekend is our application deadline. And so we encourage you, if you have not fully completed the application to get as much in as possible by the 15th. We know that if you are just new to the process or you think you are, as some people have said, we're starting late. Um, starting late is starting on January 16th and even then we're quite a flexible group. So don't hesitate to reach out. We are going to spend the next few weeks collecting those recommendations that are outstanding, following up on grades or maybe educational testing if you haven't submitted it, of course, now that I've said that, educational testing is only required for students requiring academic accommodations. If you are um, otherwise not wanting to take the SSAT or the ISCE, we realize those virtual testing has been a little challenging this fall. We are not requiring those standardized test parts of the uh, application. Additionally, we are, again, January 15th is the deadline for financial aid applications. If you are applying for aid, please make sure to go into the SSS website and get that completed as soon as possible. The last quick reminder I will, will share is that if you aren't aware, um, we are doing some small group campus tours, which is pretty exciting for uh, a school in this area. We are doing them completely outdoors. We actually are asking people to complete a health screening, to wear their masks, to physically distance from each family that is coming. We have a maximum of uh, about eight to nine families per tour, but it is a chance to come to our beautiful campus on Fox Hall Road where Aaron, uh, who you'll meet in a little bit is, is broadcasting from this evening and uh, we'll have a chance to do that. If you are interested and have yet to sign up, please email me directly. My email is jasonh, as in Henry, at fieldschool.org. The other reminder is that we have got a lot of questions about additional materials or letters of support for students. Uh, we recognize that it's really hard to get to know students, um, especially for teacher recommendations um, when your students are mostly virtual. If you have a music teacher or a coach or something of that nature, don't hesitate to reach out to you. Sorry, 21st century Zoom meetings. My dog is throwing a bone down our stairs um, that we have. Please feel free to email additional materials or art or whatnot to admissions at fieldschool.org. Tonight, we're gonna to hear from Aaron Bachman as to sort of some of the, the tent poles of the 11th and 12th grade program. We're gonna hear from our director of college counseling about their approach to finding the best fit for students beyond field. And then 
the most amazing special part, we're gonna hear from our young alums who have taken some, graciously taken some time out of their day, as we say at Field, shown some real generosity of heart to participate in this. And I am beyond grateful to them and for Caroline Johnson and Oliver Macklin for their work um, in arranging this. So Aaron, I'm gonna send it over to you. I'm gonna put myself on mute and we will get started. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you so much, Jason, and welcome to everyone here this evening. Um, uh, thanks for that introduction, Jason, saying that I'm broadcasting live from the field school, which I am, and in sort of a, an irony and improper use of that term uh, for a school that has so many great, you know, vistas and views, I'm literally, the backdrop is a whiteboard. So, um, you know, I, I could have chosen some better places to, to broadcast from, but this is where I am. Um, so just really briefly, I am an advisor uh, in the 12th grade and a history teacher for the 11th grade. Um, so I have worked at the field school for over 13 years and primarily with 11th and 12th graders. So I feel pretty qualified to be able to speak a little bit about the experience that our 11th and 12th graders have um, here at the field school. Um, I will try to be fairly brief um, because we wanna get to the, the real substance of the event, um, which is of course my colleague, Amy, and then our amazing uh, alumni panel. Um, but I do wanna cover briefly sort of two major topics. One, an overview a little bit of the 11th and 12th grade experience. So talking about the skills we develop, kind of an arc of the 11th and 12th grade experience and the hallmarks of those years at the field school. And then I wanna turn briefly to a little bit of an overview of academics. Um, we talk a little bit about some of the choice that our 11th and 12th grade students have in their classes, as well as some of the key projects that they um, engage in as their kind of hallmarks of that time. Um, so, like I said, I wanna start first by kind of overviewing some of the skills that we build in our 11th and 12th graders. Um, one of the most important is certainly the skill of self-advocacy. We are trying to build our students and pushing them towards self-reliance and independence, right? Communication is certainly key here. And we want our students to be taking the initiative as much as possible, um, building that skill that they are going to need to be able to work with uh, professors in college and with bosses in jobs, et cetera, outside, the, outside of the school walls. Um, we also focus on community responsibility. We are very cognizant of the fact that we do not live in a bubble. Uh, Field is in a, in a lovely area of DC, um, but we do not just stay here. We bring people from all around this community and we are a part of this community. Um, so this is something that we take very seriously, particularly with our juniors and seniors. Um, we talk about smart goal setting, right? Not just sort of uh, pushing for the moon at all times, but doing things that are attainable. And the process of building those goals help make you a more effective student and learner. We also focus on the ownership over one's work, right? By the time you get to 11th and 12th grade, we're not looking to find an excuse about the dog that ate the homework or the dog that dropped a bone down the stairwell, right? It's more about um, what did I do in terms of helping to make my work better? What do I need to do and what, what can I do um, to take ownership over that? We help build resilience. This is a time where there's a lot of changes in your life. There's a lot of preparation for moving outside of the walls of field. And we wanna help make sure that our students are ready for that time. I also need to say, of course, that we focus a lot on diversity, equity, and inclusion at our school. It is one of the hallmarks of our program and something we have been consciously working on for a long time here at the field school, um, particularly since I've been around here uh, in these years. And I think that it is something that becomes even more crucial for our juniors and seniors as they prepare to become full, you know, full citizens and voters in our society. Um, there's also a number of academic skills. I'll kind of cover some of those things later on in the presentation. I also wanna talk a little bit about the arc of the 11th and 12th grade years, right? There's something that I have said for years and years at the field school. Whenever I meet people talking about the field school, I'm pretty sure Amy probably heard me talk about this when I interviewed her a couple of years ago. Um, I'd say that at field, we build great seniors, all right? The path that people take as students here at field is not always the same, right? They're going through their own ups and downs. There might be some side turns. There might be all sorts of different directions that they're gonna take but we aim to produce students who are ready for college, careers, and the world. 
right? And the path for those students might, as I said, might be different, might take different times for each of them to get to that point, but we build great seniors. And that's something we take a lot of pride in. Um, another big arc of the 11th and 12th grade program is really the fact that our academics become more, much more challenging and rigorous, right? Um, we focus on depth over breadth in pretty much all of our classes. That's why uh, we don't have AP classes. We're not here just teaching to a test, right? We are here to dig into the things that matter and to teach our students the skills they need, particularly at the upper levels of our school to be able to know how to, cha to tackle challenging problems, not just to have a whole bunch of facts in their head. Um, another uh, mainstay of sort of the 11th and 12th grade years is that we encourage our students to take on leadership roles at the school. I'm seeing amongst our panel here, um, thinking back to a lot of the, the leadership roles that they took on while they were here at, at, at Field um, and the fun I got to have kind of helping guide some of them along that way. Um, we, whether that is in the sports, right, on a varsity team, being a team captain, in the arts, um, which I'll talk a little bit about later in our studio program, or in the various clubs and activities that we offer um, as a school. And I would also note that one other big thing about the arc of the 11th and 12th grade is that while it is also a school-wide experience, um, the move that the field school has made to project-based learning and major summative assessments as a way to determine um, you know, one's skill in an area and their ability to master the material is particularly pronounced in the 11th and 12th grades. Uh, the last thing about sort of the, the overarching aspects of the 11th and 12th grade I want to talk about are the, the hallmarks of the 11th and 12th grade community experience. Um, I don't want to get too much into some of the traditions that we do. Um, in, our, in our days of COVID, it is hard to predict what exactly we'll get to do. Um, McKinley here on the call would have firsthand experience of what it's like to be a, a senior um, at field during COVID and how some of the changes we had to make. But I can say that some things have not changed, right? Um, I would say one thing that is, that is crucial no matter where we are and what kind of environment we're in is that we try to develop our, our juniors and seniors into powerful advocates for change and into stewards of key values. If something is right, we want them to push to preserve it. And if something is wrong, we want to see them work to change it, right? Um, we're also heavily involved in providing student voice at the school. Um, there are assemblies, sometimes they're virtual, right? Uh, student leadership roles of clubs that are occurring in, in, uh, in our electives program virtually. Um, we push our juniors and seniors to be the ones who are the voice of those programs and are doing many of the, the leading roles. Um, there's also a lot of milestones to mark sort of these shifts of, of junior and senior year. And as I said, we've had to get a little creative in times of COVID, um, but um, you'll hear a little bit from Amy about our college prep experience and how that has been done um, in, our, in our unique learning environment. Um, in other years, uh, this past year, we have not had our winter internship program, which is a hallmark of our school, um, but it's something that we will certainly get back to once uh, we can resume to a little bit more of a normal situation. Um, but also some of the other things we look forward to, the idea of like a, a 12th grade breakfast to, to start the year, uh, a, a dinner together with the faculty to conclude the year, our skip days, our prank days, a spring trip for the juniors. These are the kind of things amongst homecoming and prom, all these sort of things that you would expect it at many other schools. We do here, but we do it in our sort of unique field kind of way. It's a small place and we have our own twists on these things. Um, so that kind of covers the, the general arc of the 11th and 12th grade. And now I wanna briefly touch uh, on some of the academics that are, um, academic choices and the sort of various projects that you might experience as a junior or senior at field. And then I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Amy, to talk about college. Um, so in 11th and 12th grade, I mean, there is a little bit of choice uh, prior to that, right? Based on sort of the language you wish to take or the studio uh, class that you wish to take, but it's really in 11th and 12th grade where we get the real uh, choice in terms of our academics, where we can specialize a little bit more in many of our subject areas. So for instance, in our history curriculum in the 12th grade year, you can um, opt to take a class on ethics and civics, right? Wholly based on the, the constitution and, and great philosophers, and it's a very rigorous curriculum. Uh, we also have a course called Revolutions and Resolutions about modern day issues um, related to geopolitics, particularly focusing on a non-Western experience. 
Um, in science, we have a broad array of courses that students can start to choose, um, actually starting in 10th grade, but really when you, again, when you get to 11th and 12th, advanced biology, advanced physics, advanced chemistry, environmental science, psychology, computer science. We have quite, for, for, you know, for a small place like field, we have quite a, a broad array of opportunities for our students in the sciences. Um, that same goes for math. We have a statistics course where you can get a little bit more of the practical knowledge that many people need um, when they're approaching uh, problems in math from other career angles. Um, there's an advanced math seminar, which is wholly problem set based and, and encourages not only getting the correct answer, but getting a creative solution to reach that answer. Um, in our English curriculum, even though English is a mainstay throughout our time at, at the field school, um, there are sometimes uh, offerings of film studies, sometimes fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Um, these are things that that change based on the years, but there's sometimes those are available. Um, and Amy might be able to speak a little bit about how we help students make those choices. I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell Amy what to do for her, <laughs> her presentation, um, but that is something that in addition to our college counselors helping to guide our students in their choices based on their interests and where they want to go to college, there's also the advising system that we have here at the field school, which I've been a part of for many years, helping to guide our students, not only into the, the courses that are interesting for them, but also the the courses that are the best fit for them academically and with the balance of their schedule. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, and then I will, I will stop, <laughs> is to discuss some of the specific and exciting projects that we have as 11th and 12th graders. Um, in, um, I'll just kind of go by some subject matter areas. In math, um, we've had uh, in our statistics course, a final research project that our students have engaged in. And I'm proud to say that uh, we have won a national statistics competition multiple times um, from our students. And one of these projects was even published on a uh, very famous baseball blog, Fangraphs. I'm looking at my friend Adam up here, uh, whose good friend Sam wrote that article um, and, and was published, very cool. Um, we also make sure that our values are reflected in our projects. For instance, in pre-calculus, one of the big projects uh, for that math class is something called the Wage Gap Project, where students are examining the, the historic and, uh, and current wage gap um, by gender and, and in, the, in America. Um, there's also the fact that we can't escape the, our love of studio, right? So in Algebra 2, um, uh, our students do a project where they create a piece of art based solely on the graphs of various functions. Um, so, I, you know, Math was never my forte, but this is a kind of exciting way that we get to see how they do this. Um, in our sciences, there's a number of really like key projects that occur as well. Um, there is the, the hatching of bob white quails in a bio, something they do every year, and most of them usually survive. Um, there is uh, making soap and nylon and even ice cream in our advanced chemistry course. Uh, designing Rube Goldberg devices in advanced physics, uh, making parachutes and testing them. We have a fantastic balcony overlooking our meeting house area. And my office is right there with glass window looking out on this balcony. And it, I know when it's time for that project because I'll just be looking and then suddenly parachutes just start dropping in front of my office window. Um, you know, they, they just don't think about me being there and just how I might get frightened by that, but so it goes. Um, our environmental science courses have done air testing um, in the community around field um, to see what sort of pollutants are in our, our air. And also, of course, designing and programming games in our computer science classes. So again, in our math and sciences courses, our STEM courses, a lot of really interesting variety. Um, but I don't want to begrudge the humanities with their exciting stuff because um, although I did used to teach science, I am now a humanities teacher full time. So um, in our English classes, uh, one of the key projects in 11, uh, in English 11 is analyzing the great Gatsby um, as well as doing a project on the American West and the frontier. Um, which I think is a, a pretty exciting one. For our English 12 course, um, there are the, um, the focus on the now a thousand splendid suns involving a, an Afghanistan research project and critical theories. And uh, the fact that we ask our students because one of the hallmarks at field is that all of our seniors speak at graduation. So one of our 11th, or excuse me, our 12th grade English projects is to draft your graduation speech and our students examine uh, great 
commencement speeches through the years and analyze them before creating their own. And I can tell you, having witnessed all of them, um, they're they, they know how to, 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 to say a good speech here at Field. Um, in our history curriculum, yay history, that's my department. Um, in our history 11, the, the key point is that we always ask our students to create their own individual research projects. Um, seeing some of these panelists, I remember exactly what their projects were. I happen to have taught a lot of these panelists for history 11. Um, no, no, not at all any coincidence that they're on the panel that they had me. Um, but, um, you know, that's a really cool thing. Um, we have in our revolutions and resolutions class, uh, a summit that the students engage in about the 1966 Nigerian Biafran summit, where they create policy proposals for future global issues and a dossier on this summit. I don't know much about that topic, but our seniors certainly do when they're in that course. Um, and then, of course, in our ethics and civics class, any of our panels that were in there could talk about the Supreme Court simulations that they have done over the years. Um, it gets incredibly engaging and um, uh, as, as a law school graduate myself, I can say that many of our seniors do better than most of my colleagues did uh, when I was in law school and probably better than I would do, um, which is why I'm teaching now. <laughs> um, and I'd say the last thing, of course, is that our studio courses are full of variety. It, it, there's, the list is so long that I can't really go into that. But I think one of the hallmarks there with the 11th and 12th grade, particularly our 12th grade, is our senior portfolio project, where we invite our students to think both of a theme for or a body of work in the subject matter that they have probably practiced, maybe going on seven years at that point, um, to display and organize that work, and then to have to defend their portfolio and how it is judged by the community as well as their teachers. So I've talked for about 15 minutes or so. I think that's, that's probably too much, um, but I wanna turn it over now to my colleague, uh, Amy Ciccone, um, to talk about the college process. And then you'll unfortunately hear from me again as I help lead our panel. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I appreciate the, the throw over um, and into the college process, which is no small part of junior and senior year. Um, and in fact, you know, it's, it's one of the defining moments as you all head out into the, the great big world out there. And it's, um, it's my good fortune to be able to work with all of you uh, and all of the juniors and seniors throughout the college process. Um, and Aaron mentioned that we do, our big focus here is fit. It's finding the right fits for all of our students, for every individual student. Um, and it's not about, you know, where, where's your sister applying or where's your cousin apply? It's about what are, what are you interested in? What are your goals? What kind of a college are you looking for? Um, what are you thinking about majoring in? How's your learning, you know, what's your learning style? What kind of a, a home are you looking for? Um, and where are you gonna grow and learn in the best place over the next four years? And for some, that's a small liberal arts school um, that's got a great cozy community like Field. Some are ready to take on the, the bigger, wider world in a, in a big city like New York, like McKinley did. Uh, NYU right downtown taking on the city in the big world. Um, sometimes you want the bigger rah-rah school. You're ready for something, you know, that next step beyond Field. And you want that, that go blue Michigan. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, just a next step into that, that bigger world beyond. Whatever it is you're looking for, our job is to help you get there. Um, and we get to know you very, very well as we go through this process. Um, and we do tailor the college process to each individual student. And I really wanna emphasize that. And we empower students to really take the process on as their own and really, um, really find those great fits to learn about themselves and find all those great fit schools for them. We typically begin the college process in January with a college night. Um, we did start this past year. We started in, uh, with a, co a college night in November. Um, because of COVID, because of all of the craziness surrounding the college process right now, um, and some of the changes that have been happening, we figured we'd, we'd give that information sooner than later and start the juniors a little bit earlier. So we did that this year. Um, we adapt as we need. Um, but we have a, a great college night. We give an overview of the process. Um, and then we start meeting with each individual student. And we actually meet with all of the students individually first before we meet with the student and their families. And that's for two reasons. One, we really wanna get to know the student one-on-one -on -one without maybe a parental influence that says, well, I went to and you should go to. We wanna hear what the student has to say, right? What are, what are your goals and dreams? What is it that you wanna be? What are you looking for? And we get to know the student 
student kind of just firsthand and we make them an individualized college list. And that's the, the beginning list that we start to work with. And then we say, okay, families, come on in, let's have a meeting, let's do this all together. Um, and we've been having some great Zoom meetings already with families and we kind of talk about the list um, and we talk about different input and we talk about the testing process and where do we go from here and how to do those virtual tours right now and um, what to look for. And so we're having those conversations and those conversations continue throughout the winter and into the spring. Um, uh, typically, and the other great thing, another hallmark about field is that we have um, college workshops that are integrated into our curriculum throughout the winter and spring. So between seven or eight times throughout that cycle, uh, we will meet with students as a group, uh, whether in their kind of classroom settings. Uh, we've done some in person. We'll probably do a good number of via Zoom this year as well, um, but we'll catch the students as they're on campus in our, in our hybrid um, programming. Um, and we work with students on, you know, we work with the Naviance program and finding the colleges. We look at college touring. We talk about college interviewing and we do some practice ones. Um, we look at lots of different essays. We start working on the common application and, and get that set up. So we do all of that in school with the students throughout the winter and the spring as we kind of get them ready to kind of begin that, you know, deep dive. Um, and one of the things we've added in the last couple of years as well is we've added a boot camp over the summer, which has been awesome. Um, it's a great way. We, we let this past year, we did it all virtually. We actually offered four and five, four or five different weeks of programming where you could, and we had you know, 20 to 30 college reps from all over the country. And we had them working with students on their essays. We had them doing interviews. Um, we had them do a whole uh, case studies event where they get to read college applications and pretend to be a college counselor. Um, and then we work with the students directly in, on filling out the common application. So we did a lot of Zooms with share screens and, and got a lot of work done in the summer. So that's been a great uh, kind of asset to our process. So hopefully the goal is by the time we hit September and we get back to school, the students have the common app filled out, a college essay written, and they've got like a college list that's, that's pretty much ready to go. Um, and that's when we start in and we work closely with every individual student to complete those essays, to do the common app. Um, as my students who have had me as a counselor can attest to, I'm happy to read every single supplemental essay and review them and offer feedback. Um, I make sure all the, uh, we all make sure that the essays are read and that they're going out in a nice, beautiful little package um, and that the student is putting their best foot forward. Um, another thing we do in the fall is we invite over 200 reps, college reps um, from across the nation and internationally to our campus to meet our students and to interact with them. Um, so the students who know, especially in the fall as they're applying to, you know, their top 10 schools, they're meeting with the reps who will be the ones reading their files. And that's really key. And this is where students who kind of take on that ownership and, and have that awesome uh, ability to self-advocate, this is where our students shine. Um, and they get to work with those reps and chat with them and ask them questions. And as we know in this college process, the personal connection is really important and our field students do an awesome job with that. Um, this past year, we did not host reps on our campus. Instead, we hosted them virtually and we did Zoom meetings and we actually covered a lot of them in August. Um, before even school started. So all of these students met with reps, had those connections, and were able to still foster those relationships um, kind of right as the college process was beginning. So it was really actually like kind of seamlessly worked itself into the application process this year. But we, we really encourage those relationships. And that's part of our job in the college office is to help facilitate those relationships and make sure we have those reps um, who understand field know what we're about, how unique and awesome our, our school and curriculum is, and how great our kids are. And they walk away saying, we love your students. They're the best. Um, so they're, they're really impressive. Um, so, you know, we, we work with them through the college process. We get them all applied. We, we uh, work with each individual student as needed throughout the fall applications are in and then we have our early rounds and our regular rounds we celebrate as the year uh, goes through goes on 
and then the students are ready and poised to see their final list of college acceptances and from that make their final college decisions um, and so we've we've you know these students have grown and learned about themselves throughout the whole process and they make those awesome great college choices that they know are the right fits for them um, so that's the college process in a in a four minute spiel and i'm going to hand it back over to aaron to see us through thank you amy i really appreciate it um, well now we're at the fun part um, we get to hear from our panel of young alumni um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and do some brief introductions. So um, let's go by sort of when you graduated from field. So uh, panel, if you can try to remember this, it's going to be six names. We're going to try to do it. It's going to be Jackie, then Natalie, then Nanette, Carter, Adam, McKinley. All right. Try your best. You can make it work. I know you can. Um, so what I'd like you all to do is just briefly introduce yourself what college you attended when you graduated from field and what you're doing now or what you're interested in pursuing after college. All right, I'll get started. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jackie Prosky. Um, I graduated from field in 2014 um, and then I went to the University of Michigan um, for undergrad. Um, I majored in philosophy and minored in sociology um, and now I'm uh, in my third year at uh, Fordham Law and I just accepted a job as a public defender in Miami. So that's what I'll be doing next year. Um, hi, I'm Natalie. I graduated from field in 2015 um, and I went to Princeton University. I majored in computer science and I minored in history and diplomacy. And I'm currently a software engineer uh, at Google and, um, but I'm planning on going to grad school next year in computer science. Good evening, my name is Lynette. I graduated from field in 2019, and I'm currently a sophomore at American University, um, and I'm majoring in psychology and minoring in justice. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Carter Lynn. I graduated field in 2019, so I'm a sophomore now at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm studying economics with a minor in math and history, and I don't know what I'm going to do after I graduate. Hi, I'm Adam Bressler. I go to University of Michigan. I'm in my second year there. And I, just like Carter, don't quite know what I want to do yet. But on campus, I am the director of broadcast operations for the student radio station. So maybe something in that vein. Hi, everyone. I'm McKinley. I graduated from field this past year. And I'm currently a freshman at New York University. Not totally sure what I'm going to major in yet, but looking at something in either psychology or the music business. Excellent. Thank you all for those introductions. Jackie, we'll have to talk offline about law school. I've got some uh, some pointers for that last semester for you. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to ask a couple questions and I'll, I'll pick some panelists to answer each of these things. Um, so the first thing I'd like to know, panelists, is I'd like you to describe how you feel that field prepared you for college in terms of your interactions with professors and other adults on campus, as well as your ability to self advocate, which was one of the things that we talked about. Let's start. Um, let's go ahead and start with where we are. McKinley, why don't you go first? Sure. Um, I think field prepared me very, very well. I personally was a very shy person before I came to field and honestly had quite a hard time talking to teachers, adults, any authority figure without getting nervous. Um, but when I got to feel the teachers were just so open and friendly and that really helped me get comfortable reaching out to them for help in classes or even just to chat, you know, at any point during the day. I can't count how many times I've just talked to Aaron um, in the meeting house and such. So they really helped me with that. And that definitely carried over to college. I'm looking into applying to a specific program right now at NYU. And, you know, I have to have a letter of recommendation for that. And it was really no big deal asking one of my professors for one because I'd already gotten to know her really well over the semester. And we've had a lot of great conversations. So it just transitioned pretty smoothly, honestly. That's awesome. Thank you, McKinley. Um, let's see, Nanette, what, what, I, you have something to say about this. Um, yeah, definitely. I went to a pretty big middle school. So it was really easy not to interact with teachers, um, but, 
Fields environment definitely encouraged me to reach out more um, and ask for help, which is a really big thing for me, something that I still work on today. Um, but um, meeting up with teachers, whether it's about homework or planning a community day, which we used to do before Corona, um, I felt comfortable asking for help. And it's definitely carried over, like McKinley said, into college, whether it's dropping into professor's office hours or even just hanging back after class to go over material. Excellent. Thank you, Nanette. Um, let's see one more. Uh, our future lawyer, Jackie, why don't you tell us what you what you have? Um, so I agree with everything that's been said. Um, but in addition, just because I found it field, I was really encouraged to participate and to sort of try out any idea that I might have. Um, and, you know, I always knew that it, it I could discuss it with the teacher um, and that they would be open to to talking about things with me. So I found that that really translated well in both college and now in law school to feeling like um, my opinions will be valued and that I have a perspective that I should share um, and I feel comfortable sharing that definitely started uh, at field. Excellent. Thank you so much. I mean, I think that that really does speak to what, you know, we were all talking about earlier that in this community, we, we build those skills of self-advocacy and, and the environment at field really values and, 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 and pushes our students towards um, those interactions, which I think then it's, it's in my mind, I wish I had had that when I went to college. Um, it took me several years before I was feeling felt like I could go knock on a professor's door, but our students are just ready to go for it from day one. Um, let's go in a different direction here. Um, let's see, panel, how did field prepare you for college academically? Uh, did you feel like you had the academic skills you needed to be successful? Um, let's see, how about Natalie? Sure, so um, I would say that definitely for me, um, I was really scared that I was going to fail out, like to be completely honest, just because of my own self-confidence when I went to college. Um, everyone else seemed so smart and intimidating. And it felt like I was the only one who like hadn't taken an AP class. Um, everyone kept talking about A-push. I didn't know what it meant, it meant AP US history. But I really thrived in college, and it's because of what field did differently. Um, they did a great job giving me all the preliminaries. It turned out that, you know, whatever, AP classes, field classes were just as good. But much more importantly than the information, field helped me develop uh, the skill of learning. Because what I realized is you don't need any particular piece of information. You just need to be good at learning because you're going to be learning new stuff in college anyway. Um, and every course of fields helped with that. It was never about memorization. It's always about looking at things from different angles, communicating ideas, um, diving into hard questions. Um, so I didn't learn any computer science at field, though they, they now do have a class if you're concerned about that. But I. I did fine. I majored in computer science in college because um, I'd learned math, I'd learned to identify patterns, how to ask questions, find resources, and those were the skills I needed to succeed. Um, and I'm really grateful for um, the fact that Field provided that for me. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Adam, how about, how about you? I would probably say uh, the greatest academic skill I got at field was prioritizing different projects and assignments and times and commitments. I know at college, uh, you have a ton of stuff thrown at you. You're kind of lit off in your own uh, two feet. And uh, for a lot of my peers, they kind of struggled uh, with that independence. But my uh, time at field really trained me well for that because I had to learn how to practice different uh, assignments and balance uh, them from different classes, how to balance extracurriculars, uh, clubs, uh, athletics as well, meeting with assignments, which I feel a lot of larger places, they don't really teach those skills. That's great, thank you so much, Adam. Um, you know, let, let me, I wanna try to like phrase this question a little bit differently and get, get another response here. What about like, Beyond just being prepared, is there, are there any like successes that anyone in our panel like had in college that you think like field was like really responsible for? Um, I mean, I've called everybody else. I'm, I'm going to go with Carter now because you're the only one I haven't talked to yet. Of course. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I, I think I found a lot of success um, writing in general in college, but more specifically, I started writing for the school paper, which is something I never would have imagined I'd be doing when I was younger. Um, and I think I think I attribute this as success to field because of two main reasons. One of the first is the hard skills, just knowing how to write. I learned that from field from Aaron and other English teachers and history teachers. Um, and then I think the second thing is the soft skills that field teaches. 
Um, that's one of the intangibles. You can always learn facts and whatever from other schools, but the soft skills, the people skills is something that's really important that carries through for the rest of your life. And those two things have really set me up well for success um, as a writer for my school paper. Um, I think growing up, I really struggled um, putting my thoughts into words and field really showed me how to organize what I want to say in writing. Um, and I think, I think that um, it was from these things that I was really able to find success um, writing for the school paper. And I attribute a lot of that to field. Um, thank you, Carter. I, I would just like to, to note for the audience, um, all of Carter's great writing skills that he got at Field came from each of the classes he took, probably with the noted exception of US history with Aaron Bachman. Um, but all the other ones definitely gave him a lot of great background there. So, um, all right, uh, let's see. Let's, um, I'd like to hear about um, let's kind of like talk to some of our older young alums here, right? Um, and how field influenced your chosen career path, um, either the one you're in now or the one that you're hoping to pursue. So um, Jackie, why don't you go for it? Sure. Um, well, in addition to, um, you know, exposing me to a lot of different perspectives, um, both through my classmates, um, the things that my uh, teachers taught me about, um, and in all of the things that we, we read um, and learned about. Um, I definitely went to college and then on to law school knowing that I wanted to do some sort of public interest work, um, public interest law, um, and now uh, becoming a public defender, I definitely attribute not only my um, sort of learning about and awareness about all of the um, very grave issues um, that need need attending to in society. I think field is very cognizant of making sure that everyone, um, that students understand what's going on in the world outside of the field bubble and outside of their personal bubble. Um, but also I, I felt like um, all of my classes um, encouraged me to engage with and really think very critically about the material. Um, and so that definitely prepared me for my career in law um, and for knowing that I really like arguing. I really like engaging with the text. I really like um, learning about a lot of different things. Uh, and so I definitely, I actually emailed um, Chris Lorraine, who is a, a teacher um, at Field, who I had both in eighth grade and uh, senior year. I emailed him the other day to tell him about my job uh, offer and acceptance because his uh, I'll get into this later if I'm asked about it, but uh, he is one of the many teachers at Field who directly influenced, I, I directly attribute my success to him and the other teachers I had at Field, so definitely. Thanks so much, Jackie. Uh, two notes on that. One, had I attended Field, maybe I wouldn't have become like a big time corporate attorney uh, defending big, bad corporations. Instead, I would have been doing something noble like what Jackie's doing. Um, and secondly, apologies for my frantic arm waving. Um, at Field, we, we believe in the value of preserving electricity and power and the lights are on automatic timers. And apparently I'm not moving enough on this panel and the lights all shut out. So if I was like, if you saw me on the camera just going like this. I'm so sorry. And I did not mean to distract from Jackie's really important presentation there. Um, Natalie, how about, how about you? Is there anything about um, your, how field may have influenced your uh, career path, especially as you're kind of changing it a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So I really had a very positive experience with the teachers at field. Um, Jackie mentioned this, that there's definitely a handful of teachers who I've stayed in touch with and who really left an impact on me particularly the impact that teaching can have. Um, and I wanted, I wanted to be a teacher and I still wanna be a teacher. And I also really like research. And so I would love to be a professor, that would be great. But um, you know, if, if not that, then a teacher in another way. And that's a lot of why I wanna get a PhD um, because I saw the, uh, how, teaching could be really fun. A lot of teachers at field had a lot of fun with it and it was fun to learn from them. And it's a really powerful and important thing to do. And um, so I, uh, that is definitely was the root of my interest in uh, education and higher education. And I'm excited to, um, yeah, become better at that skill. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Natalie. Um, you know, since since Jackie brought it up, let's let's go ahead and, and, and get to, to that question about um, your experience at Field and like anything that particularly influenced you. So, are there any uh, academic courses um, that really like influenced 
the, the choice of major you had or your career path. Um, Jackie, I, let's go back to you because it sounded like you really wanted to talk about that. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, so I mean, I thought it was an incredible opportunity um, to take the uh, what was then called the Justice Seminar, which was um, a senior uh, history elective with Chris Lorraine, uh, who is still a teacher, fortunately. Um, and we read a lot of philosophy, which I really hadn't had too much experience reading and dissecting philosophy texts um, prior to that point. And uh, it I, I was like, wow, I'm having the best time doing this. Who knew, uh, wh what is this? Um, and so through, through that class, I realized not only what I wanted my major to be in college, but also what I might like to do after college uh, because we you know, did a mock trial, we had a debate. Um, I got comfortable really learning to understand all sides of issues, whether or not I agreed with all of the positions. Um, we also, we, went uh, to DC criminal court for a day and watched part of a trial in preparation for a mock trial we were having. And it was sort of then when I thought, wow, this is exactly what I wanna be doing. Um, so both through the skills that I was learning and the things that I was exposed to, um, and because that class encouraged me to participate a lot and really dig into the material, uh, that absolutely influenced me. And I highly recommend that class. That's great, thanks. Um, let's see, how about Nanette? Any uh, particular classes that, that influenced you? Yes. Um, like you mentioned earlier, Erin, there are certain classes that you don't really start taking until your junior and senior year. And psychology was one of them, um, is one of them. Uh, I was really looking forward to taking psych and it exceeded my expectations. Um, Ava doesn't teach there anymore, but she taught me. And learning psychology with Ava was super entertaining. Uh, we performed a lot of activities. Um, we even walked down to the river school, which is about five minutes away from school and performed activities with uh, elementary students. Um, and it was also really informative. I learned a lot. Going into AU, I wasn't really sure how it fared out compared to my peers, um, just being in a bigger school, kids from all over. Um, but starting my intro to psych courses my freshman year, um, it was definitely a relief knowing that I'd been well prepared. Um, so yeah, I, I decided to major in psychology yeah, because of psych class with Ava. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Nanette. It does sound like um, a lot of times, and not to pat ourselves on the back here as teachers, but oftentimes our, our alums are associating these classes with particular uh, faculty members at field. So I'm wondering, panelists, um, are there any particularly influential teachers that you had at Field um, and the impact that they had on you? Um, let's go, I, we haven't heard from McKinley in a long time. So McKinley, why don't you go? Yeah, um, I think that personally there have been a ton, but one teacher that really sticks out to me is Adrian Nicholson, who taught me junior year for advanced physics. Um, I'm just gonna level, I'm not really a physics person. I learned in that class, but I think what was so important to me about that class and why I always kind of reflect on my experience in it is because Adrian just teaches students how to problem solve so well, whether that's, you know, in advanced physics, but it's definitely something I've applied elsewhere. She made me become really comfortable with not knowing the answer to something immediately. And she's just very helpful at explaining things and walking you through things super well, but also, you know, not giving you the answer, letting you figure it out on your own. So definitely a great teacher for like becoming comfortable with not being comfortable, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, McKinley. And I'm glad that that was the lesson she imparted. Um, Adam, how about you? Any particularly influential teachers? Yeah, field as a whole, it's brightest part was its teachers. They uh, pushed me to achieve more, uh, get engaged with the material, enjoy what I'm doing, reach beyond uh, the curriculum. And I know I had Aaron twice and as a baseball teacher, a baseball coach, and I know Jackie mentioned Chris, but another teacher in particular was Simon Wright, who I was lucky enough to have twice. I had him for physics uh, that McKinley mentioned, and also had him for computer science. And he did a great job of helping me connect the two disciplines together. And I applied one skills I learned in the physics and the uh, computer science and vice versa. And he also really pushed me to apply, uh, like and engage with the parts of the subjects I enjoyed. And I 
uh, outside of class, I met with him to, to go beyond the curriculum for stuff I was interested in and I engaged with. And I got a job opportunity through that, which he helped uh, push me to enjoy that, which I appreciate. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, you know, the, the teacher-student relationships that we build at Field are, are pretty powerful. And, um, you know, it, it helps to be in a small place. Um, and to get to really know, as a teacher, to get to really know my students and for them to feel comfortable talking to, to their teachers. Um, and the, you know, it's, it's, this is actually one of the, the real pleasures of being on this call is just getting a chance to see so many of my former students um, and getting to see the things that they're moving on to. It's kind of bringing a tear to my eye. I'm just, I just can't hold it back. It's a little, little emotional right now. It's so fantastic. Um, all right, you know what? You know what else builds emotion? The studio department, right? Because you know, art can really move you. That's these are my seamless transitions. My segue game is on point tonight. Um, I want to think about the studio art experience that many of you had here at Field. So even if you didn't pursue arts in college, which is totally fine, um, what was the impact of your field studio experience on your ability to, let's say, like how you think and how you learn, right? Like, does it help kind of like create create creativity for you? Um, Nanette, how about you? Yeah, studio art was huge for me. I started taking it my 10th, um, in 10th grade and I stuck with it up until my senior year. Um, prior to going to the field, the last, the last time I took an art course was in elementary school. So the fact that Field is so passionate about art was really um, refreshing. Um, for me personally, uh, we learned several media over the years, but my senior year, uh, with the senior portfolio project, I really got to do a little bit more exploring, um, with the guidance of my teacher, Desmond. Um, he's also a really great teacher at Field. Um, I decided to talk about, well, not talk about, but, um, express, uh, one of my passions, gentrification through art. And that was very, um, it was eye-opening. I learned a lot about gentrification and then also the ways in which I viewed it. Um, and then also the way it's interpreted by other people, um, especially during our, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name, Aaron, uh, in the gym where we set it up. And uh, it's really during nice. the, the portfolio defense, I don't know, studio day? <laughs> Yeah, studio. studio day. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a year long project and it, it gave me the opportunity to express myself creatively, which was huge. And it helped me improve my focus and discipline and grit, really, to stick with something for that long, continuously learn about it. Um, it was it was a great experience. That's awesome. Thanks, Nanette. Um, Adam, you talked a little bit about like uh, getting into to sports journalism at, at, at Michigan. Is that something that you got from here at Field? Absolutely. Uh, teeing me up for this perfectly. I took journalism as my studio for six of my seven years at Field. And I know some of you might not think that as a traditional studio, but I noticed a lot of the same skills I uh, picked up from it. And it really set me up well for college uh, going, I can, I'm now on the student newspaper and I'm a, a commentator for the radio station and I broadcast Michigan sports, which is a ton of fun. But uh, back to the skills I learned, it, it's, it's not just academic skills, but also life skills too, like holding those accountable uh, in power. That's like something you learn big in journalism class. Uh, treating others with respect and compassion, uh, trying to find other perspectives and um, approach problems from unique angles. All of those I really got driven into me through the studio program. That's great. Well, thanks, Adam. And, uh, and I have to say, as a former, as your former baseball coach, I'm proud to have teed that one up for you, right? Um, you know, because you were like basically at t-ball level in terms of uh, your hitting ability. Sometimes, a uh, <laughs> little little burn there from the from the teacher to to his alum. Um, okay, anyway, so let's uh, let's let's get closer to the to as we wrap up. We got a few minutes left. Um, I want to hear from a couple of you about how the academics that you're overall exp like. Be, excuse me. Think beyond the academics about your overall experience at field. Like you know, the support system you had, uh, extracurriculars athletics, the interactions you had with your peers, right? Did any of those experiences help like prepare you to be a young adult 
Um, McKinley, let's hear from you. I think, again, field prepared me super well. You know, Aaron, you mentioned the phrase of senior year is like field makes great seniors. But I think that goes beyond to field makes great leaders, just because I had never really thought of myself as someone who could like have a leadership role in high school. But I had so many opportunities that were just not given to me, that's the wrong word, but kind of, you know, that I was made aware of like, oh, you can do this. You know, I got to, you know, be the captain of the team. I got involved in extracurriculars, even in the classroom where I was generally pretty like quiet before speaking up. Definitely all things that feel cultivated within me. Um, and I've definitely been able to apply that in college as well. I've joined some different clubs at NYU and I've really begun, you know, seeking out opportunities to meet people, whether that's, you know, peers, friends, professors, or even people in the professional world, like looking at internships and beyond. And it's definitely something that I think started at field. That's great. Thank you, McKinley. Uh, Carter, how about you? Yeah. Um, well, outside of academics, I think one of my biggest takeaways from field was a willingness to explore new things. So it wasn't necessarily just one extracurricular um, in particular, but I think rather the range of, of extracurriculars that I was able to try a hand at really allowed me to find this new open-mindedness um, towards exploring new things. And I think field in my mind has a culture that teaches students to try and not judge something until you've given it a shot. Um, so when I was at field, um, students had were able to participate in a certain number of team sports, um, take art classes as um, we've talked about before, um, find internships, uh, participate in clubs and activities. Um, and I was just able to use a lot of these opportunities to explore a range of my interests, even if I didn't know I was interested in it at the time. Um, so I, was able, I switched from photography to ceramics. I learned about ornithology and the history of chocolate and clubs. Um, I found an interest in ultimate Frisbee, which I still play today. Um, and I even got to play basketball. Um, so many times I was kind of reluctant to take on these activities, but it was the culture of field that my peers, my friends, my teachers kind of urged me and pushed me to try these different activities that were available. And over time, that's kind of made me just more open-minded to trying new things. And I think that's one of the biggest things that prepared me for this young, as a young adult in today's world. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Carter. Um, folks, I feel like I could keep talking to our panelists for, for a long time with lots of questions, um, but, uh, but they've got busy lives and you all do too. So um, I wanna thank all six of you. Thank you, um, Jackie, Natalie, Nanette, Carter, Adam, and McKinley um, for being here. And I'm gonna turn it back to Jason to close us out. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you again to Natalie, Adam, McKinley, Nanette, Jackie, Carter. Also, Amy and Aaron, thank you both so very much. I am a newest, I am one of the newest people here at Field. I joined in July of 2019. So I wouldn't have been able to do this without the institutional knowledge of my assistant director of admission, Caroline Johnson, and my admission associate, Oliver Macklin. So thank you very much to the both of them who are on this call this evening. Um, they helped reach out and connect with our young alums. I appreciate everyone taking time out of their evening tonight. Um, it is truly one of Field's most cogent points of their mission, generosity of heart. And I really appreciate everybody participating this evening. Please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Jason H at fieldschool.org, to Caroline at admissions, at fieldschool.org or caroline j at fieldschool.org and we really look forward to continuing the conversation with you throughout the next few weeks and months so be well everybody take care and let's uh hope for a happy tomorrow take care and good night thank you so much <laughs>